Okay, snipers. Okay, let me. Snipers. So, what is a sniper? In World War II, snipers were often used as long range assassins. They would be used to take out important enemy targets silently and often from quite a distance, up to 2,500 yards. Snipers were masters at camouflage and hiding in plain sight since they needed to sneak into em uh, enemy territory and get to their destination without being discovered and killed. Snipers would often wait very patiently in a single spot for days and days without moving. They're just waiting for the right moment to strike there and it can be very frustrating at times. Snipers were often some uh, snipers were also used as reconnaissance, uh, which is basically spying on people or observations. So what kind of impact did snipers have in World War II? Snipers often assassinated uh, military generals and other leaders. So this would often leave enemy forces uncoordinated, leaderless, and vulnerable for attack. This also inspired fear in the enemy. One example is the assassination of the, uh, of the American president, uh, Abraham Lincoln. He was assassinated by snipers, and uh, assassinating important leaders can throw an entire nation into chaos or completely change uh, the course of an ongoing war. Snipers also often created uh, opportunities to attack the enemy. This can be done by eliminating their defensive uh, forces and their observational forces. This way they're essentially blind and defenseless. In uh, eliminating enemy artillery observers, which is uh, basically the, the person who is directing their artillery fire is uh, is crucial so that once their troops charge they won't have any, uh, they won't have much firepower to counterattack with enemy generals are also a huge target for snipers since they are basically the leaders of an army snipers uh, once again snipers also acted as reconnaissance at times and uh, they can get deep into enemy territory so they can see a lot of things that the rest of the military can't. Another thing that snipers were good at was delaying the enemy. By eliminating important targets, enemy action could be delayed by quite a bit, such as assassinating a, a crucial target or like shooting a train or something. Wow. So, uh, Kyler, if I can ask, if my understanding from your presentation is like a good sniper will be, uh, it's more, uh, it almost works. I'm talking about the, the impact is like a, an army, right? So if they can delay the uh, enemy's movement and causing chaos, creating opportunities for um, the, their own side to attack, that's almost the, the power of an army. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so what kind of tactics did snipers use in World War II? Snipers never exposed themselves more than they absolutely needed to, and when they did, they were camouflaged and could not, uh, and they could not be seen from a distance. Snipers would wrap their rifles in a cloth that matched their surroundings and this reduced the shine of the rifle in the sunlight and it also blended in the rifle more. Snipers also wore uniforms that basically made them almost invisible. Sometimes snipers even wear leaves and sticks on their head if they're operating in forest terrain so that they blend in even better. Snipers were trained to focus uh, and stay up for 72 hours straight and wait for a target to come. Wow. 
A good sniper never fired until they were absolutely 100,000% certain that they would eliminate the enemy target. Since firing would reveal their position and usually if you get detected in a sniper, you, you're going to die. Snipers use dummies to att uh, attract the attention of enemy snipers and get uh, and they got them to reveal themselves like that. Patience was key in snipers, so snipers were extremely patient and impatiency often meant death. But, uh, such as revealing yourself. Mm -hmm. Snipers did everything they could to hide their position, even down to the very last breath. They would even avoid getting scents on themselves, such as smoking, deodorant, and soap. Some snipers built distractions, such as a fake shelter, and uh, others did other, uh, other things that were similar. They also did everything they could to limit their shadows and even breaths. So some great snipers of World War II were Simo Haiha, Finland. He's from Finland. Simo Haiha used the Mosin Nagant M91 bolt action rifle, and he refused to use this, uh, a scope, which is a magnified optic, after he saw it would give a very bright, uh, very bright reflection flash once the sun hit it in the morning or evening. This gives away the sniper's position, and it uh, often there are stories where enemies, uh, where two snipers are going one on one in the forest. One sniper is using a, a scope, and he's pointing the wrong way. He's pointing towards the sun. So once the morning sun hit his scope, it created a very bright flash, and the uh, other sniper was able to kill him based on the flash. So Simo Haiha used his trusty iron sights even for the longest and toughest shots. He was the deadliest sniper in World War II and had over 500 confirmed kills and around 700 unconfirmed ones. All of his kills were against the uh, Soviet Union when they tried invading Finland. He stuffed snow in his own mouth so that his breath was as cold as the snow, and so you wouldn't be able to see the steam that comes from your mouth when you breathe, on, uh, when you exhale on a cold day. He also froze the ground in front of him so that snow wouldn't be blasted everywhere by his rifle when he fired. This would also hide his position further. He even hid a few meters back from his snow fortification so that if the enemy detected him, they'd be shooting in the wrong place uh, if they if they uh, needed to like if he needed to run away. Okay. Vasily Zaitsev, Soviet Union. He also used the Mosin Nagant. He had two hundred and twenty five confirmed kills during the Battle of Stalingrad and 32 kills before that with a standard issue rifle. He is also known uh, as the greatest sniper in of the Soviet Union in World War II. There's a movie called Enemy at the Gates. It's a pretty popular one. It's a moving on his sniping uh, career. Uh, Kyler, there are some very interesting questions uh, in the chat. So I'll read it to you. Um, how come Jay asked, how come all of these good snipers be using uh, Mosin Nagant? <laughs> Mosin Nagant was one of the, was known as one of the best snipers uh, of World War II. And even World War One, the thing was out. And the, the thing is just a great gun. It's still used today after 130 odd years of service. It's still hella popular today and it's still very good. It hits very hard. Uh, it has a 762 by 54 millimeter cartridge. So that's that's a big cartridge. Um, and it you can see how long the barrel is. Probably doesn't look very long in the picture, but um, in real life, this barrel is very long. Um, Kyler? Yeah? 
Isn't it true that these snipers are really loud? Yeah, they're very loud. Yeah, it can literally blast your ears. Yeah. And what and happened to uh, the uh, the Simo Haya guy in the picture? What happened to his face? So what happened to his face? This is after surgery. He got uh, unlucky with an enemy sniper who used a special explosive round, hit him straight in the jaw, blasted his jaw open, but he managed to uh get away due to probably adrenaline he managed to stay conscious and get he ran away far enough that his uh allied troops would rescue him and after after waking up in the hospital he decided he couldn't really like do much with his face anymore like he couldn't really eat but then after after some time he regained the ability to eat but then after that, he was uh, offered to another rifle to go back to war, um, but he refused. And he also lost his trusty Mosinaga M91 that he had since he was just a child. So it's pretty sad. What, did he retire after that? Hi yeah, he, he retired. Okay. Yeah, after, after being uh, wounded said- like... You said he got a, a, a Mosin Nagant um, as a child. Yeah, because uh, he was uh, he lived on like in a ranch, like uh, back then they lived on open fields. So he was like practicing. Uh, he was he it did was hunting like- as like a child, right? And he learned to shoot with his iron sights, without relying on a scope because most likely didn't have access to a scope back then. Like even nowadays, scopes are very expensive. Several thousand, several hundred dollars are the cheapest ones usually, if you want a like actually usable scope. So back then they practically didn't really have access to them. Like even in the army, it was pretty rare. So he. And I lost my. For, um, works in the same way as hunters. Pretty much, hunters are often snipers as well. Oh. So once he basically lost his rifle and got his face half destroyed, he didn't want to go back. And yeah, that's basically it's basically it. Pretty much uh, done. Oh, I'm not uh, done with this guy. So if you guys, um, this, like the movie Enemy at the Gates is pretty interesting. And it's a pretty good World War II movie and it pretty, like, it's pretty intense. So during uh, his career as a sniper, he, he was also very good at hiding himself. So usually maybe sometimes he would hide on like high ground uh, under some ruins or even in literal water pipes and then after he shot uh, a few times he changed his location so they wouldn't be able to find him based on his previous uh, location if they spotted him so uh, and then with his partner they uh, used extremely effective tactics to uh, like dodge and survive in enemy territory. So one of his common tactics was to cover one large area from three positions and basically a triangle and it covers a lot of area. Yeah, so basically that's uh, that's my presentation.